Although knitting and other handicrafts are having a bit of a moment during the pandemic as we all try to keep ourselves busy at home, the art and practice of knitting goes back a long way through history. I'm Eva Higginbotham and I spoke with Loretta Napoleoni, a journalist and author who last year wrote a book about the power and history of knitting. We have to wait uh, until uh, the Middle Ages uh, when the church uh, during the Crusades most likely discover these beautiful knitted items coming from the Middle East and from the Far East. Now in the Far East and in the Middle East, knitting had been carried out at much higher level. So for beauty, for aesthetics. Uh, so the church most likely commissioned the production of uh, cushions, for example, or uh, uh, drapes uh, for the church uh, in order to celebrate uh, the Catholic religion. So we see knitting um, coming into Europe uh, as an expression of art uh, during that time. And in uh, 1350, we have the first paintings, uh, one from Italy and one from Germany, of the Madonna's knitting. Uh, But it took until the Renaissance before knitting took on new life as something more high fashion, with the invention of the purl and stitch, the two types of stitches that are fundamental in modern knitting, which can produce lots of different patterns and a very smooth and comfortable knit. So it was at that time, in the 1500, the the Italian merchants uh, who had uh, access to silk, because Marco Polo brought the silk from China, decided to produce uh, silk stockings. Uh, And these were extra fine stockings, uh, absolutely beautiful, extremely expensive to produce. They were produced in sweatshops uh, with tiny, tiny needles. Uh, The royals uh, of Europe went absolutely crazy for that kind of product, and everybody wanted to wear them, especially men. um, If you... Remember those pictures of Henry VIII with the short pants showing these white legs covered, of course, in silk stockings. These stockings were super expensive. Some comparison of prices, for example, the king of Denmark spent more money per year in buying socks than in paying his his staff. Puts my regular cotton socks to shame. Although nowadays it's easy to take knitted materials and other textiles for granted, there are some key moments in history where knitting in particular has played a vitally important role. One example is during the American Revolution. So in 1600, um, the British sent some ships from Sussex to Massachusetts and that flock proved to be particularly good for that part of the world and they multiplied and the wool was high quality. By by 1660, wool was more precious than tobacco, for example, in the colonies. So wool was really a, a very, very important uh, product of the colonies. But England started getting nervous that the colonies would start exporting the wool themselves, cutting off England from the financial gains. So they passed the Wool Act, the first of a series of acts that triggered the American Revolution and a war of independence. The American colonies were prohibited from exporting wool anywhere other than England, and the sale of wool was heavily taxed. And they were prohibited from buying textiles from anywhere apart from England. At that point, the colonies decided to boycott the British textile. So that, that was a very, very courageous decision because, of course, they did have you know, the raw material, but they didn't have uh, the factories. They didn't have you know, the way to transform this raw material, so the raw wool, into textile. So at that point, the women decided to supply every single need of textile in the colonies, and they started knitting together. That they would meet in houses, uh, in public places, uh, libraries, anywhere. They would uh, bring uh, all their equipment uh, in the morning uh, and then knit or weave or spin all day long. Uh, they were called the spinning bees because you know they acted really like bees. Uh, 
And the, the movement uh, that was called the homespun movement uh, became a symbol of uh, the revolution. People wore um, hand-knitted, hand-spun clothes uh, all the time as a sign of participation to the movement to become independent from England. When the war started, the women also clothed the army. Time to look at that woolly scarf in a whole new light. That was Loretta Napoleone speaking about the history of knitting from her new book, The Power of Knitting.